What you do to make your own parchment paper, it's kind of neat because it gives it that wrinkly texture that sometimes is fun to use in science class or social studies classes when you have them making original documents, is just to take your paper okay, and spray it so it's evenly wet like that. And then you can set it on window ledges and stuff to dry so that it comes out with that sort of crinkly texture. Okay. Somebody want to try this? Help me out a little bit. Finger sore because I've been doing this for a lot of papers on the <laughs> It's great when I can still do volunteers this late into the course. You can do the next one. You see how I did it? Just spray it evenly. Just, no, 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 not red. <laughs> Just clear like this. <laughs> same bottle being used on both of these. What's going on? Careful the observation in the bottle okay, might help you out too. Now this is a blue bottle. And you can see that the liquid inside is clearly blue too. Yeah, here it's clear, there it's red. Andrew, do you have a... Is it like a, a litmus paper? Ah, okay, so normally kids will associate, where have they seen this happen before? Normally with pH paper or with litmus paper. Something that a lot of them are familiar with the chemicals they use in their swimming pools okay, to check to see the chlorine levels and things. So there's some kind of acid-base reaction going on here. Okay, and here's uh, the way this works. What I have here is just plain yellow paper. Okay, the liquid in here is Windex. What's the key ingredient in Windex? Oh, no. Ammonia. Okay, now ammonia is a cleaner, so is it an acid or a base? Okay, it's base, okay, it's alkaline, okay. All soaps are bases. So what happens here is because this is basic, it doesn't do anything to this yellow paper that's here. But this is goldenrod paper. Now this is the same kind of paper used in schools, but it's goldenrod, not yellow. And there's a chemical in the goldenrod paper in the pigment called turmeric. And turmeric ends up being an indicator when it comes in contact with something that is alkaline or base and turns it red. Now what's unique about this is as this evaporates and dries, that will turn back to yellow. So you can reuse it over and over again. Okay, and then you can throw in a few other twists for the kids like this. <laughs> okay. Now I use two different things there. It's why the S looks different than the rest of it, just so you can see the difference. But what's going on there now? Okay, so something is blocking the Windex from hitting the paper underneath those letters, right? Something that, and so wax or a crayon is the way you can do that. The S is done with a white crayon. But notice how you can still see it somewhat stick out whenever the paper's not even sprayed. So what works better is if you, uh, around Easter time, you can get the Easter egg kits where you basically do the same thing to Easter eggs. You draw on it and that wax keeps the egg dye off the egg. Well, you can do the same thing with that clear crayon from those things um, on there. That's the same thing, it'll keep the uh, wax paper on. Now, last time I, I needed to get more of this paper, I had to order a whole ream of it. So I cut some little strips, even a little starter piece of this that you can use for your own classroom if you were doing something with acid bases and you want to uh, to start that. Okay? <laughs> well, let me go ahead and.